One of the real benefits to shooting film is that you're gonna gain mastery over your images. You need to be able to dial in all the different settings yourself, the shutter speed, aperture, ISO rating, and this is gonna give you complete control over your, what's that? Nobody shoots film anymore? Just hipsters and billionaires? Well, what do hipsters wear? Ah, oh, damn it. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the show. My name's Nathan Hirsch. I'm back here with some more advice on how to become a professional photographer. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to shoot like a pro. Let's get to it. Okay, so there's a really good chance that because it's 2020, your camera probably already has brilliant automatic modes that allow your photos to be exposed properly with little to no effort. And we're kind of spoiled by this. And also by our phones that take pretty solid pictures on their own without having to go in and tinker too many of the settings. But here's the problem. You're about to get paid for your photography. It's not just about getting average shots anymore. It's about getting those incredible shots that are gonna help you to build your portfolio and help you land future jobs. You're gonna be shooting in a lot of different conditions. And when the lighting changes or your subject moves to a different location, you wanna be able to calmly set your camera to handle any situation. You also wanna have total control over what's in focus in your image and what isn't. Do you want there to be a sense of movement in the image? Do you want to have a lot of background blur? Do you want everything to be perfectly sharp? The first step in acting like a pro is having total control over your camera. And that means no more shooting in your camera's automatic mode. In fact, I think it's time for you two to break up. Go ahead, I'll just, uh, I'll wait here. Did you do it? This is kind of awkward. Okay, so now that you've broken up with your camera's automatic mode, I know that was painful, I want you to switch to the dial on the top of your camera to M for manual. And your assignment this week is to leave it on that setting and to force yourself to manually adjust the aperture and shutter speeds yourself. Don't run back to program mode. I know it can be scary, but you can do this. One quick adjustment that I do want you to make though. For now, set your ISO to auto. This is gonna allow you to just focus on the aperture and shutter speed to really get an understanding of how these two factors determine the look of your image. Remember, with today's digital cameras, you can always make adjustments to the settings, take a picture, and then take a look to see if the exposure was accurate. If it's too dark, all you have to do is let in more light by, the, by either slowing down the shutter speed or using a larger aperture. Remember, with aperture, the numbers we're referring to are actually the denominator of a fraction. That's the bottom part if you haven't had third grade math in a little while. So the smaller the aperture number, the larger the opening of your lens and vice versa. It's what they call an inverse relationship. And speaking of relationships, I can see you're still thinking about auto mode. Forget it, it's over. And they're seeing other people, sorry. Let's take a look at two examples of images shot with different aperture settings. All right, so first up, we're looking at a commercial style headshot photographed outside. And for this one, I, I chose an aperture of f2.8 because with headshots, your goal is to really to, uh, isolate the subject that, that, that's your focus, that, that individual, that person there. It's not about the background, it's not about the environment. The focus is on really that, just that person. So in this case, F2.8 is gonna help you to completely uh, isolate the subject, blur out the background enough, um, not obliterate it, but you know, enough so that you get a sense of the environment. But really, again, your focus is on that person. Next up, we've got a team photo. So you're dealing with a bunch of people in a room and the goal here is to get everything to be more or less perfectly sharp. You don't wanna have any blurry parts because your focus needs to be on all of the individuals in the shot and also to capture uh, the environment that they're in as well. In this case, we're shooting in a really cool hotel lobby and I thought uh, you know, it made sense just to have everything in, in, in perfect focus there. So in this case, we shot at F11. All right, now let's take a look at two more examples where choosing a specific shutter speed makes sense for what you want to accomplish with a, a, an image. First up, we've got a shot at the National Zoo here of this Bengal tiger playing uh, in, in the water with a ball. And I chose a shutter speed of well, 1 500th of a second because I wanted to capture the action here. I wanted to get the spray of the water, the, the motion of the paw hitting the ball, um, anything slower than that, and you're gonna get a lot of blurry um, movement, a blur of the water, and it's gonna be a totally different photo. 
so I think in this case, uh, it kind of works out with that faster shutter speed. Conversely, we're looking at a shot here of the Francis Case Bridge in uh, Washington, DC. And this was shot on a tripod at night. So we're looking at a shutter speed of 30 seconds. So the goal here, of course, is to uh, illuminate everything. You need enough, uh, uh, enough time there so that you're letting enough light into the camera um, to properly, properly expose the scene so it's not too dark. But also what's cool with having a longer shutter speed like this with waters, you get that nice, beautiful movement, sense of movement and blur at the bottom there. Okay, so now you're set up to start shooting like a pro by manually setting your shutter speed and aperture. And more importantly, you're being deliberate about the choices you're making as a photographer. So stay in manual mode this week and get out there and experiment. Use everyone around you as a potential subject. Test the extremes of your camera settings and don't worry as much about what you're shooting. It's more about becoming as comfortable as possible with your camera. This is the foundation you're gonna build your entire business on. Your ability to control your equipment and therefore the quality of your images. Everything else is just technique and smart business concepts that we're gonna cover in episodes to come. All right guys, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Please let me know how you're doing in the comments below. I'll see you next Friday.